Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Today I'd like to have a look at this rocket powered truck. Last time it had an outing, I overpowered it somewhat. by running it with one of these rocket motors. This is too big for it as it was configured in that video. So what I've done is to replace the foremost pair of rear wheels which I removed to try and get it accelerating briskly with a lighter rocket. However, as the current problem is that it's overpowered, I've put them back on in hopes that the energy required to get them spinning will help slow the brute. If I just remove the body and extract the rocket that propels it, you can see that it's a newfangled plastic one. These are really quite pricey. I think it's about £16 for five. Here's a comparison between the whole firework and the bit I'm interested in, the rocket. In order to get my rocket out of the firework, I chop them just above the top of the rocket. So all this part is the brightly coloured explosion at the end of the rocket's travel. And here you can see that I'm now in a position to remove this end cap and yank the rocket motor out forwards. Okay, when I said that I could yank it out easily from one end, I clearly forgotten quite how well glued these are. You can get it out, but it's a bit more work than I remember. And now, after having casually yanked the rocket motor from its housing, I shall fit it in one smooth, easy motion. That's up against that piece of wire. And in fact, this piece of wire transfers all the thrust from the rocket to the whole truck. As the cab has previously suffered some fire damage, I've lined the interior with sheet aluminium. This is offset lithography sheet. It's not like foil, it's like very thin, rigid sheet. And uh, I've also noticed something interesting about the truck. I've used the same lithography plate to protect the plastic chassis. And as you can see, although the rocket's here, the blast has burned through here. So as I'm not worried about weight, and in fact weight is my friend because this rocket motor's too powerful for this truck, I'm gonna do something about sorting that out now. I've cut myself a piece of two millimetre sheet, mild steel, it's galvanised. I'm going to pop that on the back. That adds quite a bit of weight. So, fireproof steel bit. Let's put the body back on. Given the way these rocket power vehicles can tumble end over end when things go wrong, I wasn't happy with having that steel plate fixed only with the two existing screws. So I drilled another couple of holes and popped another couple of screws in. I think the rocket truck is ready for testing, but one question does spring to mind. How would it be transported to the testing ground? The thing's rocket powered, it can't be driven on the road. With that in mind, I've built this. Every time I use one of these rockets, I get a nice long 10 by 10 millimeter rocket stick. I'm gonna turn this round for you. So with a chassis made of rocket sticks, a bed made of checker plate aluminium and styrene, and unsprung axles to keep the whole thing sitting very low, I've started making this. These little abbreviated side rails are made from an aluminium skewer, and for wheel, I'll be using these V12 Jaguar racing wheels from Camtech. They're on foams, but I don't think it'll matter. I wish the tyre profile looked a little higher, but I do want to keep this thing low to the ground and these are very nice small wheels. Here's the trailer with the wheels in place. I need to make some mud guards. So I've made myself a cardboard template which sits down over the axle and folds up 
something like that and I've cut myself a pair of these parts in steel ready to fold up and bolt on. Here are the mud guards ready to be screwed into position and here you can see that I'm bringing the tow hitch up to the right height for my blue six-wheel drive 1950s truck. Also I've installed this post the idea of which is that it will braille the truck forward onto these things and we have an aluminium checker plate access ramp which can be hooked in the up position via this little hook and chain and of course I've added some paint this is a genuine spot of dirty engine oil a trick I learned from cyanide tube and on the underside I've been experimenting with homemade rust paint made by letting wire wool degrade over time in a small amount of water in a jam jar I think I need to learn to apply that a bit more realistically <laughs> that's why I started on the underside of course lastly at the very back of the ramp I've added a little detail and more rust now that I'm happy with the patina I've achieved on the trailer I've applied a little of my rust paint to the wheels this paint consists of rusty water with a little PVA wood glue and one or two drops of washing up liquid to reduce the surface tension so it spreads more evenly on a smooth plastic substrate. I've added some rust to the trailer's tailgate as well and also two of my trademark empty pill blister back lights and a number plate which matches the one on the blue 1950s army truck. Let's fit the wheels. So this trailer's done. Let's load up the rocket truck. Okay, how did we do? Well, with the truck we've solved one of its two problems. The first problem was that it would tumble end over end because it was overpowered. We've definitely dealt with that. And the second problem is that it doesn't like going in a straight line. We definitely haven't dealt with that. Ideas? Firstly, how about a wing on the back to add drag, supported by a sort of pair of aircraft style tail fins? That might help. And failing that, we're talking a gyro. And as for the trailer, I was really pleased with the way it performed. The only thing it did wrong was snap its piece of costume jewellery scale chain which I was using to hold this rear tailgate up. In the future it might be quite nice to add one of those new WPL winches. I could fit it here and winch vehicles on and off instead of having to shove them with the tow truck. That's it for this time. Thanks very much for watching.